After years of dwelling in distant lands, Jerry felt an undeniable pull to return to his ancestral home. He shared his decision with his son, Caleb, who, curious and longing for a glimpse of his origins, eagerly embraced the idea. Little did they know that their seemingly casual decision would lead them straight into the embrace of destiny itself. Legend spoke of an ancient prophecy, a beacon of hope that promised liberation from the clutches of darkness. The townsfolk had yearned for this day, clinging to a flicker of hope against all odds. And now, against all expectation, fate had chosen to favor them. But as the long-awaited savior stood before them, uncertainty loomed. Would Caleb rise to the challenge, accepting the mantle of the Wolf King? Would he possess the courage to brandish his sword and plunge into the imminent battle that awaited him? The weight of the world's salvation rested upon his shoulders, weaving a tapestry of doubt and anticipation. It was raining heavily and it was dark outside. The thunder was so loud that it was almost impossible to hear anything else. There were people screaming and running around everywhere. But the most intense scream came from a woman who was in labor. It was chaos. The woman's screams were uncontrollable and she was fighting with the pain that was flowing through her body. Her screams grew more and more intense and I could hear her trying to breathe through the pain. Her contractions got more and more intense and she screamed louder and louder. Finally, she gave one last scream before collapsing on the ground with her husband by her side. Babe, babe, please hold on. I'll go get you help. Please hold on, her husband said, rushing out. Her husband ran out of the house and soon came back with a woman. It was her mother-in-law. She looked up at him with a look of pain, fear and relief all at the same time. He tried to calm her down, but she was in too much pain. We can't take her to the hospital. The man's mouth fell open. What do you mean? She's in labor, mom. If we don't take her to the hospital, where else should we take her? Is this the reason you asked me to call you when it was time for her to give birth? Look! The woman pointed at the protruding Tommy. He looked and understood the reason she could not be taken to the hospital. The bright light emitting from the stomach was enough to convince him. What do we do now? You just have to be strong. I'll handle the rest. His heart skipped a bit. When his mother says, stay strong, it meant something bad was about to happen. No, he couldn't let himself think bad thoughts. Both mother and child would be fine. Soon, the woman's scream turned into wails of pain and then into cries of despair. She finally delivered a baby boy that she never got to hold or even see. Jerry was beyond devastated. He had lost his wife while she was giving birth. It was the hardest thing he had ever experienced in his life and it left him lost and confused. He just sat on a chair, staring into space for hours. He was completely numb and didn't know what to do next. He had been with her the whole time and he hadn't been able to save them. Now, he has a son that he must raise on his own. He knew that he needed to be strong for his son, but he couldn't imagine how he would be able to do that without the love of his life by his side. Jerry, his mother called, drawing his attention to the little boy. The child was born with a staff and two rings in his hands. He was confused because he had never seen anything like it before. The staff was long and had a smooth, round end. The rings were both the same size, but one had a knot in it. 
You know what this means, right? Jerry shook his head frantically. No, I am not having this. Why does it have to be him? No, no! He screamed and took the staff as well as the rings and threw them out the window. But in the next second, it appeared back in his hands. There's nothing you can do about this, Jerry. It's his destiny, his mother said with a sigh. The night sky rumbled with thunder. The low branches above her creaked and snapped as the wind shook them. For a few seconds, their combined sound was almost deafening. Then, the roar faded to a low drone like two waves crashing against each other and became totally silent. After an agonizing moment, she could hear the rain. It fell softly, almost teasingly, as if willing her to fall asleep. But how could she sleep with the pain? The contractions were coming back. They were so much worse than the ones she had had before. Fear rose up inside her again and she was scared. She was in labor, but there was no one near to help her. She didn't want to die, neither did she want to lose her baby. She had to look for a way. Under the rain she went. She needed help, but she didn't know where to find it. The first time, she simply walked as fast as she could, trying to keep her contractions from lasting longer than a few minutes. She had to reach a building. The cold and wet weren't any kinder to a woman's body. She was soaked to the skin when she finally found one. She was desperate. As she entered, she saw that it was a house. It was a middle-class house with a few acres of farmland in front of it. The one thing she could think to do was get inside. She would have to hide from whoever lived there. But the gate was locked. There was no way to get in. She had no option than to keep walking. Suddenly, as if like a pool, she turned the corner and began walking in the direction of the forest. The rain didn't matter anymore. What mattered was that she get to the voice calling her into the forest. She didn't care about the house anymore. She walked, not knowing where she was going or where she would sleep. The howling of the wolves as they walked in the night didn't bother her in the slightest. Their screeching didn't face her. She kept walking till she stopped in front of a lighthouse. It was a few hours past midnight. As the floodlights burned through the trees, the sky had turned to a black menacing shadow. The moon was hiding, but not for long. The thunder was growing louder. The ground beneath her feet was shaking. She screamed when the labor gripped her again. She realized that she was alone. She didn't care about the lighthouse anymore. She didn't care about the wolves or all the storm. All she cared about was her baby. She got on her back and she began to push with everything she had. She couldn't stop now. She needed to get the baby out. The contractions were getting more intense, but she pushed with all her might anyway. She was exhausted and in pain, but there was no choice in the matter. She had to give birth. There was no time to be scared, no time to be sad, no time to be anything but focused. Her body was exhausted and she knew that she had to push one more time before the baby was born. She pushed again with all her might and pushed out a girl that was perfect and whole. Half a dozen wolves came out of the forest. They slipped in the air looking for the human. When the wolves came, she was afraid they would eat up her dear baby. But to her surprise, they bowed in obeisance before her. The wolves had come to serve her and protect her. She took their reins and said, I command you to love my baby with all your heart.